So, thanks for joining me. It's so lovely. <laughs> um, I'm just so thrilled that you wanted to do it. I, I love doing it and I always miss it when we don't. So thanks for joining uh, in at home. Okay, so we're going to start off with our just our lovely breath. So just breathing in. Oh, I'm just thinking about just that for a second. Just your breath coming into your body. Just feeling like it's circulating round. A little bit like those lights on the tree. And then as we always do, as you exhale, just draw your belly button in and just lifting that pelvic floor. Just nodding your chin to chest. Just to notice your feet in that lovely... Nicely parallel forward facing feet stance. And I like to feel like you're lengthened in your spine so that it's not a hunch or a collapse, it's more a lovely length. So just drawing your scapula down your back, just have a little wobble of your toes and continue to breathe. And as you bring your gaze back up your body, just soften your ankles, soften your knees. Soften your hips and then just drawing your crown so it's nicely above your, co your coccyx there. And just feeling your shoulders floating above your hips there. And that's just our lovely starter position. Being nice and aligned just makes your body more economical um, to just set the tone for your body for the rest of the session. So I wanted to, I've had a little look at the third uh, Falun Dafa. It's called the Buddhist Five Exercises. We're on the fourth one, the third one. So just bring in your hands so that just nestled like this, just here, tucked in, just in that lovely stance. We literally just start off with a breath in, just bringing both arms up. Gosh, that reminds me of ballet. <laughs> I was useless at ballet. So you just bring your hands up here and then back down. So you just keep that kind of wheel shape in your arms. And you can lift up. Um, so imagine I'm stood up. You can lift up your rib cage. So you go into that really nice extended spine. And then what we do is we keep one hand just here, in fact, actually it's here, and just keep one hand there as the other one just passes up your body. So you try and keep the palm face to your body and lift, it's actually quite hard to keep your hand face downwards while you draw it all the way up your body. So you're coming into this position and then you kind of weave your arm around so it's like that. And then you bring it down, but you bring the other one up as well and they pass somewhere here. So it's trying to keep the hands like level like this, which is quite hard. And then separating them away from one another. And then the palm switches round and you just do this kind of elevating switch motion and this is it's called something like a, a cosmic connection so just like we think about the air out in the universe coming into your body connecting you with it it it's just the same kind of idea and this energy i seem to enjoy maybe you do as well between your palm and your body so your palms remain facing you and you have to be quite mobile in your wrists and your joints to keep that palm close and facing your body there okay just a couple more like this but it's just a chinese ritual which just is meant to be really calming and really nourishing for your body there. And then we just bring the hands back round to the beginning. Beautiful. I'm going to take the weight into the palms of your, the soles of your feet. Well, actually the 
the front pads of your feet just to make that gentle lift. So we're trying not to tighten the knees, you're just squeezing the calf muscles and drawing in the pelvic floor upwards and your belly button towards your spine there. And then you can isolate the next bit. In fact, we'll just do that uh, to start off. Breath to prepare, and then literally just turning the face. So we're trying to keep everything static, shoulders to toes. So it's just your neck having that lovely rotation. And then you can add on the lift at the front. So as your face is at the front, that gentle lift and then turn to come down, lift. So this is exhale, and then turn down here. So you're just keeping up with the lift and that lovely rotation. Okay, and then we're just going to have a couple of pelvic tilts, so just observing that aligned pelvis and then tucking the tailbone under and then away. Just that lovely mobility. So this is where we're going kind of north and south and then we're going to come into a west and east tilt. So what you do is you move your hip up. Usually we keep the hips really static. So bring up your right heel and your right he hip up as well and then lower. So you're getting like a twist in your pelvis uh, west to east. So lean into it and hitch up your hip one side and then the other. And then Keeping the hips now level, take your weight into one side and just do a couple of rotations round that hip and then the other side. Just make a mental note of where you naturally want to go so that we can do the other one. I was just checking somebody didn't want to join us then. So then we go the opposite way. So if we can remember which way you went first, just go in the opposite direction there, step. And I have to start off in my usual way and then reverse. So we're trying to get this knee directly circulating that hip. Well done, I'm already getting warm. So dispose of that while we think about our, I'm going to just bring this down a little bit, lunges, okay, so have your bands in case you want to use one nice and handy, um, we're coming into the right foot, we we'll just do three on each side just to get nice and warm, so I'm going to show you the side view because I just want you to notice this shin stays pretty ver vertical really, and then come into standing straight and then down. So the knee is, doesn't really, as long as that knee doesn't creep over that toe, that's great. I like your knee in line with that joint there. Imagine that's your ball and socket joint. So your bottom doesn't sway out or come in. It's kind of set behind that knee and your knees hovering your ankle and it's not overshooting that toe. So just a couple on this side and then a couple on the other side. So as well as all of those little notes to observe, we're keeping the hips level. And then back to the first side. Again, feet are forward facing and we can hinge a bit lower. So we're gonna do three sets of five again. Exhale on this dip, trying to keep everything really angular. Good. 
And then if you like to take it a little bit deeper into this hip hinge, reach ahead there. So I'll show you from the side, just tuck that in. So there, the back remains nice and straight, breath in at the top, exhale, superb. So that ball and socket in line with the knee, it's not swaying at all, breath, reach. And I'm on the same side to overload this glute. And then if you want, and only if you want, you can add a band, whoops. Gonna, this is a really tough band actually. I'm gonna swap it. <laughs> okay, there. So just letting the scapula travel down your back and your ribs don't collapse. So I'm going over to the next side now. And just a gentle mini hip hinge at the hip just practicing keeping everything level not letting this in a thigh stretch and now i'm ready to get a little bit warmer so reach fingertips away from your sitting bones breath in at the top exhale to go down brilliant and then we're ready to add on the band, breath, two, good, three. It's really a good idea not to let your ribs, ribs drop down. Keep everything really straight in the back. And then we're ready to repeat that. Um, you might want a little drink, you might want to just move your pelvis, maybe itch it up and down like we did and then get back into it. So we're just going to repeat that, breath in at the top, just checking the toes a square, come into this. This is brilliant for knees if you've got dicky knees, as long as you don't rush into these exercises and build it up really steadily as we have done, then this will do issues with your knees really good, even arthritis, you just have to be careful not to go too deep, cautious, you can go deep as long as you've got this healthy respect for your body, deeper breath, listening to your body, just three more here. And then it's gonna be really fine for those knees. Just try not to put weight into that lengthened leg. Breath at the top, go straight into the other side. Three sets of five, four, breath. So if we try and keep the weight into this glute, then it just builds up strength in your pelvis and your knees. Second set, breath, good, three, let that band slowly close, five, breath, four, go deep into that lunge, last two already, try and be parallel, in your back, level with the floor. Everything nice and squared. That's really brilliant. That band must be harder than the one I usually use because my delta eyes are on fire here. I've just brought that nearer because we're gonna go straight into our very deep squat. So have your hands ready to fingertips on the floor. And just, I like to roll into the balls of my feet to get really nice and low. Remember you can do this on a chair or you might want, you might prefer the boxy shape, but this is a really deep squat. Similar to the next one we're gonna do, but it just gets deep into those 
tissues and joints right between your ball and socket joint at the top of your legs. So I'm not putting pressure on except pushing the elbows out there. And then I'm going to slowly start to increase the intensity by pushing the knees into the elbows, lifting the pelvic floor, and then release. We try and breathe on the relaxed exhale, lifting everything, pushing everything, elbows push, knees push, release, breath, and again. And then we're going to pop your hands down and remember like the whole of your hand down on the floor, adjust your feet so the forward facing, so bringing the weight into the balls of your feet, keeping your scapula close to your back, your rib cage close to your back, and then extend the legs into that lovely lengthening and lowering. And then we're ready to come into your box. So adjust your knees. Look at that, terrible. Adjust your knees so the knees are covering the ankles and push. That's your exhale, squeezing your knees in. Breath in, relax a little bit, maybe put your hands down. Exhale, push and lift. Breath, release. Breath, push. Let's just do one more, but we'll continue with the press and the um, squeeze, breathe, and then hands down and extend both legs. So obviously you're getting a, a little rest here, but a stretch up your back legs. We're going for this lovely stretch in your arms as well. So bending the right knee, trying to keep it over that foot, walk your hands either side of that foot there, and then release that arm up there. Have a little look and breathe. Just a little breath more there and then release, walk over, into this, and breath. Trying to get the fingertips in line with one another, just observe where you're getting that stretch. Breath. And how are you feeling? Glad to be here. Love it. <laughs> Just one more breath and then bring it down and then back to the center. Lovely breath, secure everything and then bring yourself back up. And we're gonna come into that T-stand practice. So, let's look at those options. So we start off resting here trying to maintain level hips, breath and exhale. Draw that foot up here. Find your balance. On your next exhale, lift a little bit higher and then we stay here, breath. And then on the next exhale, we maneuver so this knee's in line with the hip there. And we can remain here or on the next breath, we kind of maintain that knee right angle and counterbalance. So you maintain that and counterbalance the weight as you hinge forwards, lengthening that leg behind. So maybe find the shape and then find the form. So, um, for form, you want the hips level with the floor. This can be bent, but you know, it's more important for that out leg at the top to be straight. 
And then when you've found your balance, reach your fingertips there quite away from that toe. And all of those side lunges will have developed the strength in this glute here to stabilize you. Hopefully that's the intention. Breath in, come back. Whew, ready to do the other side. So, should be ready to swap over because it's a different side, different muscles. Exhale, reach that foot, just nestle it into the calf, avoid putting the foot on the joint, level hips. You can stay at any of these options, breath. That's it, bring that foot up. There's absolutely no way I can do that without helping it. I'm sure other people can. <laughs> breath. And on the next exhale, securing everything in and upwards. Come into that right angle there. And find your balance and tip. Ooh. Again, find the shape, find the pose, and then alter the shape so you're in as good a form as we can muster. Those globes of your bone pretty level, and then reach. Ooh. I don't know if the sofa there is helping or not. So find that kind of A-frame, that lovely A4 piece of paper framed shape. So your shoulders and your hips aren't wavering like I am just at the moment. Try and keep it super still. Breathe into the steadiness and really use your breath to stretch you from fingertips to toes and then pull it through. Lovely work. Do you know we've got a lovely stretch now? I'll just try and move this to the floor so we can see. So we've not done this so far. So I'll try and explain. Um, so just come into on all fours for a sec and then just do yourself a little pelvic tilt and then from neutral, extend your legs back here and then lower yourself down into the cobra here, just stretching, extending your spine. So what happens here is your bottom's really soft and your palms are directly underneath your shoulders. And from the starter position, your pubic bone nestles into the floor. Okay, so here comes the stretch. Take, say, your right hand and just stretch it Froggy fingers away from you, so your arms like it's a right angle to your body. Uh, and then the other hand, so imagine this is the other hand, it kind of goes there like that. And then you push down, I'm gonna actually move this so you can see. <laughs> So this hand's stretched out there and this hand's there and you push into those spider fingers and the other, this leg bends and reaches over. Okay, so I'm just gonna move this back so you can see what happens <laughs> from there. So that pushes up, this comes round there. And then you can get the foot to the floor if you can. 
and then this spare hand joins and extends there and we just stay there for some breaths okay stay there keep breathing I'm just not sure what the angle is there so I'm going to just move back breath and reach And you want to stay in these positions for about 30 seconds, which you've probably done now. So release, bring this hand back into those froggy fingers and release. Okay. Other hand like this. This hand stretches out onto the floor and then push down into the like the webbed hand. So you roll onto that opposite hip and take this leg up and round. That foot can go flush onto the floor. So you get this lovely opening in your hips and obviously across the shoulders. So this hand now, if it can, and I have to move the other hand down my back and then try and get it into a right angle with the body there and then breathe here into that space. So you're really getting a super stretch across the chest and a lovely opening here in your pelvis. And I'm hoping a bit of a stretch in your hip flexor. It's not a true hip flexor stretch, but it seemed to work okay this morning when we were doing lean back. So we're just trying to avoid a spasm in the muscles. So giving them a nice stretch for this. And on your next exhale, secure your core and release, just bringing yourself back into position. And again, your palms on the floor, just tucking your tailbone under. Breathe in and push away your body. Kind of meditate. And then you want to roll your coccyx under so you're not really really bending your back and come into this position again we can do some pelvic tilts here ready to just come up into, into this kneeling position ready for your what they call pullbacks there if I go there I might not chop my head off hey so just getting back into that A frame, not A frame, A4 piece of paper. Imagine it's framed. An A frame would be like that already. <laughs> I want you upright, okay? Nice and um, rigid. And then breathe to prepare, leaning back into that kind of polax position. Your lean backs there. Exhale here, breath at the top. Exhale, lift and breath. Just gonna to carry on with that. And we can get used to doing some bow and arrow arms here. I'd like you to visualize, first of all, imagining the band and imagine you're pulling the band because it just warms you up effectively. Initially keeping you shut, you, you face forward, just getting a little nudge back with that shoulder on the drawback. Avoid bringing your elbow, your shoulders up, draw them down and just Passing your elbow into your waist, your forearm into your waist and your palm into your waist. I see a lot of this in class. It's actually more like a choo-choo train kind of move. But avoid this as well. So draw the scapula down, breath. Exhale, breath. And then when you're ready and you feel like you're in the, you've got that, form correct then we can use the band. I'm going to use a slightly stronger one. I'll probably regret this. Draw it back, breath. Draw it back, breath. Think about that focus. 
And then when you're ready, you can take your gaze into that elbow, can't you? Exhale, breath at the top. Brilliant, good, exhale. So even if we're imagining the band, imagine you're drawing up that pelvic floor with it. Breath, these are like extended tissues. Okay, we're gonna go for three on each side. Let's see how strong we are. Good. Feel like I want to do another one. Breath here. Exhale. How's that? So. Ah, yeah, we're going to do that lovely stretch. We're going to, before we go into engaging your quads, your hamstrings, sorry, and your bum, we want a lovely stretch. Taking the shoulders across one foot, and remember, you can have one foot just tucked into your inner thigh, but I'm going to try it this way today. And we breathe up the spine as if the air inflates it. And then we fold in at the top of your leg there. And again, trying to keep the back straight rather than curved. So drawing the spine, the, the scapula down as you fold in. Hold the pose, breathe your body into the pose, and then exhale. Try and get this this gap underneath your knee less and get your nose towards your knee and flex the foot coming into this stretch breath and exhale just trying to get lower trying to get that sh that space gone and then if you want to come more into a side body stretch just bring this elbow in the inside the knee, the forearm in line with that shin, and then bringing the free hand up and over. And as long as you're feeling the stretch, that's the only rule. The intention is to stretch. And you might get lower than this, you might not. <laughs> Just breathe. Just Think, observe your body, where are you feeling that different stretch? For me, it's just above, like your pelvis reaches all around the back there, and it's the crest of the pelvis that really gets a stretch there. Breathe. Press into the heel, like your foot, push, in, push your leg into the heel. And then I like to just web my hands pop them down there and then release. So I'm pushing into the fingers. It just helps get back up nicely. And then we do the other side, of course, breath. Hands sit tall and then square your shoulders to the other space. How's that gap there? Try and decrease the gap and then fold in breath. Exhale, fold. Breathe up your back, all the way up the length of your back into your spine. Exhale, fold. Breath. Exhale, fold. Are we pressing into that heel, just pushing the whole unit of your leg into that heel there? And then just caress your inner shin with your forearm or the back of your arm there. And then unfold kind of like a flower opening up there. Breathe. Getting the arm in the correct proximity to come back round is always a little bit of a manoeuvre for me. Okay. So we're trying to breathe into the length. 
the elegance of the flexibility of the body, hopefully. <laughs> Breathe. And just forgiving your body for if it's not quite flexible, if it's a bit rigid, just bless it with some time, some patience. And then spreading those fingers that are just by your calf there. Push down and release. Good. So that was a nice stretch. We're going for your strengthening in your glutes, in your hammies. That's exactly the same today. I'm going to choose um, a nice band. But actually, oh, do you know what we wanted to do? What I wanted to do. Just before we do that, before you attach yourself to your bands again, just coming into this lovely cat and cow. You can isolate it in the pelvis to begin if you're feeling a bit stiff there. Before you ride it up into the into the cat there, spreading your scapula, and then stay in this position. From that, bring your bottom down. Okay. Guide your elbows to the floor. Feel that shape in your armpits. Just observe that getting deeper as you press your nose towards the mat. So the nose tracks the mat all the way up to your fingers. Notice your back's gone into extension, naturally coming up then into the dog. How's that? Into the cat. Choo choo train. Beautiful. Just do a couple of these lovely moves in your own time. Observing your armpits of all things here. Drop. And then when you're ready, oh, do you know what we do? The Joe's Pilates dog wee roll. <laughs> Just trying to get that knee fully articulated round that ball and socket joint of your hip and then replace breath and the other side well done mm -hmm. don't forget to reverse all of these muscles your body's amazing hey right we're ready now so hook yourself up Nice strong band, bit of intensity here, but manage it yourself. You might want a less intense band. You might not want a band at all. So I'm going to wedge my left knee under here. So you really well. Um, what's the word? You know what you're doing with this. You well attuned with it by now. So I'm lengthening the right leg here. There. So the hips are level with the floor, the knees directly underneath that hip. And we're doing like a glute squeeze and that leg comes up. And I'm doing three sets of five. We've nearly finished the first set here. And then five, four, length, three, Two, good. One, last set. Really lengthen it away. With your leg straight, you see it's just slightly different muscles. It's your gluteus maximus coming into play. And then we'll swap over. See if you can do it without touching your band. Lovely. Lengthen and lift. Oh, completely lost that. Things are useful too. So we're not dipping that lower back. These are brilliant. It's got to be bringing some power into all of this. Upper leg, your glutes, your pelvic girdle. Two sets of five, four. Not making that space here small, lengthening it. So draw your tailbone slightly under, direct that hip. So both are level. Five, super, four, three, two, and one. Okay, back to the original leg. Maintain that right angle. 
we're getting it high. Yeah, good. So that knee is in line with that hip and hopefully the shoulder everything stood straight. So we come up into that alignment and then a little bit more. Three, two, one. Two more sets of five on this side if you can manage, but manage your own intensity because these are tough, really tough. Only two more of this second set. Good. And then last five of this last set of the exercise on this side. Two, feel that power. One, switch. Excellent. How's it feeling? Stronger? Bring it up and some. Bring it down. Bring it up slowly and some. Bring it down. The first five are always that hard. Good, nearly there. That's two. One. Well done for keeping these classes up. I think they're pretty well rounded to keep you fully conditioned <laughs> in every little morsel of your body. Here we go, last five. Push. Oh, good. This supporting leg really feels it. Here, last two. Come on, mittens. And one. Okay, so we're going to do 10 little jabs on each side. Good. Okay, so we start here and we just go five, four, three, two, one, and five, four, three, two, one. Good. Other leg. Good. So we start here and we do those little push. Four, three, two, one, five, four. Nice straight back. Three, two, one. We've got pigeon pose, but a bit different today. We're going to sit on our bum. Ooh. And then just bring one leg onto your knee like this. That might be enough. But if you push yourself so that this is a bit of a smaller space then I'm hoping you get a really deep uh, release here you can even um, put that leg that foot on a sofa or wall and bring, so that's like more at a right angle, and just push yourself into it. As long as you're getting a stretch here, that's all we're after really. And then the other way. So I think even if you push your bottom towards that foot there, it's the leg that's in the air, it's that glute that gets the stretch. So pushing your bottom towards that foot, Pushing your hands away, making this distance very near, and breathe. Good. Oh, we've just got a few reverse planks after this before we do some super teaser practice. <laughs> breath. One more breath. What do you think, Mittens? Release. Okay, so I'll swizzle round. I'm not sure if this is the best lighting for the tree. What do you think? Okay, so for your... Sorry, cat. For, you want your wrists underneath your shoulders. And then we're pushing up into this reverse plank. So arms pretty rigid for this one. 
and push. Okay, so we can literally stay here in this revert plank position. If it's too much, then you can swing your bottom down and up. But we've just, we've got to quite a nice steady strength here. And then if you want to be less static, you can bend your elbows, keeping your hips high and lower and lift lowering the elbows and lift and then if you want to take it even harder you can bring up a limb keeping the hips level three two one i'm going to have to break for the next one it's brilliant all body uh strengthening like your core strength and obviously your arms as well just doing that nice stretch bow your back if you wish and then we'll just finish on that other leg. So thrusting up, keeping both legs down and bend your elbows or bringing that other leg up for four, three, two, and one, and release. Excellent. So coming into that eye position. Whew. Ready to fold down, finding your C curve, so nod your chin to chest, scoop your coccyx under, drawing your pelvic floor up. Imagine you're doing the bridge with your spine as you roll into it, passing your lumbar and your scapula, and then You want to find your hips level with your pubic bone there. And that will determine neutral. And for you, whatever shape your back <coughs> lends itself while you're in neutral there. And you avoid a deep extension. So it's just the natural curvature. Once you've found that levelness here, maintain that gap there without letting the ribs creep over because it's rib cage closure this exercise reaching your arms over your head and then around breath in that's all oh, my ribs went up then <laughs> try and keep your ribs down and then that lovely snow angel action, bringing your arms up, feeling your body and any tension or tricky bit, or maybe you've got lovely freedom of movement here in your joints and your arms. Just be thankful for that. And then what we're going to do is maintaining everything super still there as you lengthen your heel away as well. So we'll do three on one side and the remaining foot there on the floor, pressed to the floor, stays really light. Okay, you don't need to drive it down. And then the other side. So this is heel slide, rib cage closure. And it's lovely this for your knees, you've got no body weight on your knee. So, it's lovely if you have knee mobility issues. And if you haven't, you're just really conditioning that knee joint there. It's time to just bring your chin to chest. Try and keep your scapula on the floor. And if we can't maintain chin to chest, it's a good idea to have a cushion there to just help you get into the C-curve when you need it, not yet. Bring this leg here into tabletop. And today we're toe tapping. So as your arms go over, keep this rigid and tap that toe there and bring it round just for a couple more there. Yeah, you really work in these neck flexors, no bad thing. It might take a bit of building up. Then the other side, tap and reach, tap and reach. You've got to maintain this so don't be moving your back in and out of the floor for now just keep everything still and now you're going to spine imprint so 
close that space there by wheeling your coccyx under. You can literally feel your back's like a foot now pressing in to the floor so that both legs can now go in the air like this. And then you're going to chin to chest if you can, modify it by popping your head down if we're not quite there yet or if you need a break. And then march one foot at a time. Don't let that knee creep to here. You'll turn off the engagement of the lower abdominals. Okay, keep going. One more on each side, pressing the back into the floor and then see if you can do both. Really tough on the old abs. Three, breath. If your back's creeping off the floor, it's time to just pop one foot down or just work one foot again, okay? Or both, brilliant, good. Have a little break and just roll your back from side to side here. And we're gonna have a go at just the upper abs. So pop both feet down. And then what I want you to do is keep your hands just at your bottom there, your thighs, and then find C curve and without reaching your shoulders together at the front, but rolling into C curve, see if we can come up here and then down. Up, so you're sitting into your lower back and down. And then it's a little bit harder if we come up, taking the arms up as well. It's just getting used to that movement. This is like teaser one. So you work in the upper abs and practicing taking the center of gravity away from your body as those arms lift up away. Okay, now I'm gonna give those a little bit of a rest. Get your hands up underneath your bottom, okay? And I was saying in class today, not here, it's got to be there because then it makes your lower back tilt into the floor. I mean, you can use your hands as a gap or some people use a towel, but to really train your body to get itself into the right form, the bottom, top of your bottom's good or midway on your bottom. So pressing your back into the floor, one leg at a time up. We can start off like this, okay? And then we can straighten the legs and see how low the legs can go without the back creeping off the mat. Have a real healthy respect for your body. You can put your chin to chest actually, kind of lends itself to the C curve, kind of lends itself to pushing your lower back into the floor. So if your lower back's creeping off the floor, really drill it down, really kind of push, like put a welly in your back almost there. And then see if we can do it without the hands, okay? So again, be gentle. It's a bit odd because the higher the legs, the easier it is. So maybe start to move the arms up as well. Try and prop yourself on your scapula. So the little tips of your scapula there. Have a little rest and then we'll just give it a, another little burst. So what we're trying to do is that's teaser two where we're moving the legs up and down here and then moving in to the actual teaser, doing both upper body coming up and the lower body coming up. Try it with your hands down here first, moving both sections. So come into spine imprint into that tabletop. And as you lengthen the leg, see if you can pick your arms up there. Go back into the C, back into the C, you know what I mean? Your, your uh, spine imprint, breathe and lift. And then start to try and get your 
arms a little bit higher and that control. <laughs> and see if you can do a little hold of it. And then a true teaser would be to have your arms here. And the trick really is to get your lower back into the floor. And actually it's like a trick of physics, not biology, I find. Like there's a sweet spot where you chin to chest, you start to be able to lift your legs up at a certain angle, but not before your lower back is in the mat. You've done really well to climb to this steady feet. We'll just do one more breath. And you do either, any option, manage your own intensity, just practice something to try and get to your teaser. Okay. And then bring it down. Can't get out now. <laughs> there. Oh, good job. So we're going to finish with the bridge because it just stretches your tummy and any muscle around your back that's had to come into play to work the teaser just massages it a little bit. So from your neutral position, just massage your lower back into the floor, climbing your vertebrae away from the floor, coming into your bridge there. Just double checking your heels are underneath your knees. Breath as your arms float overhead. And then just give yourself a little moment to climb back down, gnawing each vertebrae into the mat. You can maybe sway a little bit if you've got a good back and it doesn't mind maneuvering around or you can just stay nice and straight just using your pelvic tilt to creep your lower back your lumbar vertebrae into the floor and then when you've got spine imprint try relaxing and then you kind of flow into neutral keep your sacrum on the floor and reach your rib cage up so you're now in extension and then relax again. And then I thought it might be nice for you just to bring your arms over your head and separate them here just for a hip roll, bringing your feet together, knees together, and sway into the side there. And just breathe a couple of breaths into your rib cage, giving those intercostal muscles a little bit of a breather, literally. Exhale, palms to the floor, secure your core. I nearly said swing then, I think it's probably a faux pas in Pilates, <laughs> if I can really control, manoeuvre down, there, breath, breathe into this rib cage, that lovely cavity. Allow yourself this moment, boy, you're going to need it. Feel the rise and fall with just that breath, just circulating your body. Nice webbed fingers, breath, secure your core to maneuver yourself safely back up. Let's lower your lower back into the floor, bring your arms over your head again. So that lower back, that lumbar's like at that foot in the floor, it's gonna lever you off as we just get ourselves back into our easy seat. Ears leave, sorry, as your arm in line with your ears, you can start to literally roll back up. Didn't you do well? Just cross your legs. I hope you managed to finish your finale uh, session um, with your teaser. Brilliant, and your tea stand, amazing. Bring it up, bring it into yourself for that very, very well-deserved hug. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a lovely, lovely Christmas.